In this video, we're going to discuss carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are compounds with the chemical formula of CH2O to some number. We might have C2H4O2 or C6H12O6. These would be examples of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are synthesized during photosynthesis. They are used by the cells as energy. Now, carbohydrates have various other names. They are called saccharides or sugars. Here are a bunch of carbohydrates that are monosaccharides. So the term mono means one. Here you can see that each one of these is separate. They are not bound together into polymers. This top structure is glucose. This next structure to the right of it is fructose. When you take glucose and fructose and put them together, that makes sucrose, which is the same as table sugar, and I'll draw that structure later on. But again, these are monosaccharides, so they only have one sugar in them. Down here are two other very important monosaccharides, which are ribose, which is important in ribonucleic acid, otherwise known as RNA, this one to the bottom right is deoxyribose, which is the D in DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid. Those will play a role when we actually get to the discussion of DNA, okay? And you'll notice that all of these have this ending here of os. Os is an ending that one can put together with sugars or carbohydrates or saccharides, that they all have this os ending in their names, and that's a good way to pick them up in a out of a crowd, so to speak. Now, one thing to make sure that we all understand when we're looking at these is every place that's a joint between two lines and doesn't have a letter, those are all carbon atoms. That's a way that when we start getting to larger molecules that we write these things, that all of these joints here are understood to be carbon atoms, just to make sure that you understand what these drawings mean. Here are two disaccharides. The one up top is sucrose. That would be our table sugar that we enjoy so much putting in our coffee. The one on the bottom is maltose, and that would be the type of sugar that comes in grains. It's responsible for malt beverages, yeast in beer. When they are breaking down the sugar in the beer, they're actually breaking down this. And if you'll notice, now this is one glucose, and this is a fructose molecule. But here down at the bottom, we actually have glucose and glucose. Disaccharides can either be two of the same monosaccharide dimerized. So the term dimer means two. Polymerized means more than two are stuck together. So this is a chain of two of the same monosaccharide. This is a dimer of two different monosaccharides, glucose and fructose. So these are disaccharides. Oligosaccharides are three to six monosaccharides together, joined. Polysaccharides are more than six monosaccharides joined together. There's a special name for polysaccharides, 
And that special name is starches. Breaking apart dye, oligo, or polysaccharides into monosaccharides is called hydrolysis, where lysis means to break and hydro means water. The reason that that's true is because let's say that we take sucrose and we add a water and we could either have acid, so I'll write that as H plus, or sucrase. ACE means that it's an enzyme. So sucrase would be the enzyme in particular that breaks apart sucrose. Then we would get our glucose and fructose monosaccharides back. The reason that this is called hydrolysis is because there's the mass difference between sucrose and glucose and fructose is the same amount as two hydrogens and one oxygen. So essentially, we're adding the mass of water to sucrose to get out glucose and fructose. Similarly, if you take lactose plus water in the presence of acid or lactase, you will get glucose and galactose. Lactase would be the enzyme that people who are lactose intolerant lose as they reach adulthood. So most babies have lactase enzyme and so that they can process their mother's milk. However, as you reach adulthood, certain human beings lose the ability to make lactase, and so they lose the ability to convert lactose into glucose and galactose. This is one of the reasons that they have stomach problems. So if you take something like lactate, that's actually lactase enzyme that you're taking it will be present then in that person's system to do this conversion of lactose to glucose and galactose. There's another set of reactions called glycolysis. Glycolysis is the way that glucose is metabolized into, it's transformed essentially using 10 enzymes. So there's a 10 step process where there are 10 enzymatic reactions and at the end of these 10 enzymatic reactions your glucose is transformed to two molecules of pyruvate and two molecules of ATP. And this is basically the main way that the body or cells will convert glucose into energy. So this process can be aerobic or it can be anaerobic, except that in cases where it's anaerobic, lactate is made instead of pyruvate. And this lactate will be converted in the body to lactic acid, and this is what makes sore muscles. Now, we should also note that other monosaccharides besides glucose can function in glycolysis. So fructose, galactose, and many other monosaccharides can also be used in this glycolysis step because they will be converted to one of the intermediate compounds that are formed in this 10 enzymatic steps. So those products are one of these intermediates and they can slip into in between these reactions and will also be used to form pyruvate and ATP in cells or lactate and ATP in cells, depending on what portion of that process they can slip into. The liver can synthesize glucose in a process called glucogenesis, gluconeogenesis. It's going to make glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. These non-carbohydrate sources include 
proteins and some parts of fats. And this then allows that new glucose to undergo glycolysis. This is one of the ways that your body breaks down fat for energy. This new gly glycose that's made can also be put into uh, glycogen for storage. So there's more than one way, or in plants, it can be made into cellulose, which is one of the most abundant compounds that exists in nature is cellulose. It makes wood, paper, the fibers that you get in celery, etc. 